All right, guys, welcome back. So today um, I got a couple of questions about my abdomen kit that I use, uh, specifically like what is IOBAN? How do I use my abdominal kit? So I'm going to go over that a little bit today. Um, kind of got some of the questions after I showed this nice little compact kit that I keep on my plate carrier. I usually keep one in a GP pouch on my left side. I'll also keep some in my vehicle bag. I'll keep some in a Delta bag that I'll take. Usually one is kind of always with me. So we'll get into kind of what I pack and then I'll do a quick little demonstration on how I use them. So they end up like that. The contents are, so typically what you'll learn in like an EMT program or something like that will be sterile, moist, occlusive, bulky dressings. So we keep with that. Um, I think these are just some five by nines. You can get these at Walmart. This is just sterile water. You can get that on Amazon, you know, anywhere that they sell medical supplies, uh, tractor supply or anything like that in the horse section. So typically what you would see in like an EMT class, base level of care, is you would get these gauze pads wet. And this is all for abdominal injury. So we're looking at like eviscerations. Um, anything where the intestines, the guts are protruding a little bit, we want to make sure that we can keep them moist because they do dry out pretty quick. And then if they do dry out, a lot of times they have to get snipped and then you end up with ostomy bags and stuff like that. So remember that a good medic gets their patient to higher care. Great medics set their patients up for success at the next level. So we're aiming to be, the goal is always to be that great medic. Um, so this is just something that I've picked up as I've gone along. We'll get these wet, these gauze pads. You can use an eight by 10. I've got two five by nines here. So the contents are your five by nines, some sterile water. This big thing here is your aisle band. I'll keep a small skin stapler and then a six inch ace wrap. So all this folded down properly. You can play around with how you want it to get it fit, but vacuum seal it, sucks down nice and small fits in a pouch, fits in bags. So uh, abdominal injuries, eviscerations, stuff like that are, they're pretty gruesome injuries to look at. And a lot of times when you do have, when you do have a patient with an evisceration, a lot of the attention gets focused there just because of, you know, oh my God, that's on the outside. That's supposed to be on the inside kind of a thing. Like I remember seeing my first evisceration. I was like, holy shit, that's not supposed to be out there. That's supposed to be inside. So you have to be able to look past that and kind of understand uh, the physiology of what's going on with that and what you need to do. So the IOBAN idea, I had used uh, pretty much this setup, skin stapler and the, the six inch ace wrap. This is kind of what I've been using for years. And then I went and I was looking on Crow Medical site at some pouches and they've got a really good blog of uh, just some some ideas that that guys have done over the years. And that's where I first found out about the IOBAN. Um, I'm pretty familiar with Tegaderm. You can use it, you know, typically you'll see Tegaderm being used to secure like IVs and stuff like that. Uh, but there's a million uses for, for Tegaderm. This thing is essentially an enormous thing of Tegaderm. Uh, this one here is a 32 by 17. So I took that and I had some of these and I started playing with it. A while ago and I found that running it through training and stuff with the IOBAN made everything infinitely easier like instead of having to secure you know the way that you're taught in say an EMT program or some wilderness first responder programs securing these with tape this is basically your tape but we'll get into it in a minute about how it all kind of comes together so IOBAN is for me a very specialty thing uh, it's kind of like a surgical incise drape. It is antimicrobial. So it is starting to kill some of that, the bad shit, you know, protecting the wound, killing some of the bacteria that may have gotten in there. Um, these are typically used for surgery. You like stretch it out over wherever you're doing surgery, keeping the skin area uh, clean and you can do your incision through these. So let's kind of get into some of the contents of these kits a little bit more and we'll, um, We'll kind of do a, a mock injury for you and show you how I use them. All right, guys. So this is my old dirty pillow. This is the body pillow that I got 
oh shit, over a decade ago, uh, when I first went through an EMT program, uh, is something one of the instructors recommended that we get. Uh, this guy's name is Fred, and what Fred was used for and still is used for uh, is practicing your physical exam. So I remember spending countless hours running through uh, the whole DCAP, BTLS, physical exam, primary, secondary survey, all that good stuff. We'd have little arms for him and legs for him and be able to do all that. So highly recommend you guys go to the dollar store, not the dollar store, uh, like Goodwill, get, an, get a large body pillow, and then you can start doing your practicing your physical assessments on this uh, when your wife isn't home. So she doesn't think you're completely fucking crazy. So uh, that's just a little tip I picked up along the way. So for this, we're going to say that the sticky note here is the evisceration. So what we would do is we would take our 5x9s, 8x10s, whatever you got. I like these little bottles of saline. Um, I found that a flush doesn't really get these pads super wet. If it works for you, it works for you. Um, maybe throw a couple of salines in there, uh, so a couple of saline flushes in there. But so what I would do is I'll take this, I'll take my five by nines out and I would just saturate them, get them nice and wet, place those directly on the eviscerated valve. From there, after you've gotten that nice and moist, you'll take your aisle band. So this is my training aisle band that I used to show guys. So you have this outer sheath that protects it. You have this little paper sheath that it comes in and it kind of falls out of it. So the cool thing is that this is basically just a huge thing of Tegaderm that's antimicrobial and it's enormous. So up here where you would pull it apart. So what I would do is I would start pulling it apart here, get some sticky on the side, and then we're going to notionally do it. So then we would come across the eviscerated bowel. It would get nice and tucked in like so. And now this is all a giant adhesive field. This is keeping stuff in. It's already been moistened. From there, I would take my six inch ace wrap and I would just wrap circumferentially around the guy's torso. It takes two minutes, maybe, um, if you're having to move the guy all around. It, it really doesn't take long at all. And then this is helping to secure. So your adhesive is helping to keep all that in, kind of building up some pressure with those. Ace wrap helps secure it a little bit further. But it's a really down and dirty, quick, really nice way to treat a bowel evisceration, get them packaged to move, and get on, get on with your uh, whatever you're doing. So shout out to Crow for throwing out the thing about the aisle band, because before this, it was pretty much just an ace wrap to secure it. Um, Crow goes into, in that article, a little bit about the skin stapler. If that is something that you're wanting to look at, I recommend checking them out. Um, but you can what they do is they'll do a skin stapler, shove it back in, staple it back up, which is, you know, the exact opposite of what they taught us to do many, many, many years ago um, was that you don't want to put anything back in. So I like having the tools. I like having the know-how, but aisle band for eviscerations, I'm a huge fan of. We simulated it at Susk. Uh, I gave the guys a pretty good bowel evisceration patient. Uh, we were developing the scenario. They, the guys that were developing it with me wanted to do like tourniquets and stuff like that. And the whole goal was you need to go out and find a, a downed helicopter and find the casualty, treat the casualty, and evac them. So I kind of injected some real world. And I'm like, if they needed a tourniquet for a true arterial bleed, by the time the teams get there 10, 15 minutes down the road, the guy's going to have already bled out. So I nixed the tourniquet idea and I gave them an evisceration. And a lot of guys, when they jumped in the, the hole and found the guy, we had uh, chili, fake blood, and link sausage as the, the simulated evisceration. And it looked pretty good. Like, it looked like an evisceration. The guy was just sitting there holding his guts. So, it's a, again, it's a gruesome injury. Know what to do for it. Get it taken care of. But IO band, some 5 by 9 sterile water, 6-inch ace wrap, and a skin stapler. And boom. Nice little abdominal kit, and you're good to move the guy. So hope you got something out of it, and uh, have a good day.